extraordinarily well coordinated. They uh, proved their case to a jury effectively and have managed to, to develop a great deal of information from sources from, in fact, turning some former members of his network. Andrea. So they believe, Tom, that he is the most likely person, but it's far too early to say anything. We want yes, to uh, tell you that American Airlines has confirmed that one of its flights, American Airlines Flight Number 11 from Boston's Logan Airport, scheduled to go to LAX. It left at 8 a.m. this morning. 45 minutes later, it was diverted into the World Trade Center. It was the airline that was involved. We can only assume on a popular flight like that that it probably had uh, a capacity load of passengers and crew on board. There was a hijacking. That was the first plane that was involved. We don't know about the second plane yet, nor do we know the origins of a third plane that deliberately uh, flew itself into the Pentagon this morning near the heliport. Uh, NBC Jim McLeshevsky now has been forced to evacuate that building, and so we we'll have to wait till we hear from him. Saw some pretty dramatic pictures from the Pentagon just moments well. ago, Matt. Let's go back to a few seconds ago. This is now about an hour after the first impact. We saw some dramatic footage of a portion of one of the twin towers actually it appearing to fall away from the rest of the building. Can we go to the tape now? Here we go, right here. This is, I mean, when you look at it, the building has collapsed. That tower just came down. Let's go to Bob Bazell, who is at St. Vincent's Hospital. Bob, what's going on there? What can you tell us? Uh, Katie, St. Vincent's Hospital is one of the hospitals that's closest to the World Trade Center. Uh, in the last few minutes, ambulances have been coming in right after, one right after another. Most of the people they're bringing in have second and third degree burns, very serious burn victims. Uh, they say the smoke inhalation people are, will probably be the most serious, but they're not even close to getting to them yet. There's a triage operation that's going on in the area ambulances are being dispatched to every hospital in New York City. The entire staff of this hospital has come in from wherever they are, and it's true at hospitals across New York City. They're standing there. As soon as an ambulance pulls in, dozens of medical workers rush up to it. But it's a, it's a carnage that's be, just beginning. Everybody here, the emergency service workers I spoke to who have been down into the World Trade Center site say this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's going to be massive amounts. Casually. Bob, yeah. what, are, what are they telling you about people? Were there many people inside the building, or is that just is it just too early to tell it's where the too people early to were? Tell. There were certainly, you know, probably hundreds, even thousands of people in the building, even though it was before nine o'clock and the start of the usual work uh, uh, period, because it's just such a large area. So. The number of casualties is just enormous, and it's, it, it, they're just beginning to sort it out and just starting to get to the first few that they can get to. But the ambulances are just coming in. They're lined up. Uh, every ambulance in New York City has been summoned. They're standing in a queue. They go in as soon as they can uh, get a, a, a victim and bring them up here right away. Bob, we're also looking at the lower end of Manhattan now as a result of the collapse of one uh, World Trade Center. Uh, that whole financial district is now engulfed in smoke and debris, and there probably is going to be a lot more uh, smoke inhalation problems as a result well, of almost numbers. certainly Tom I, I I was actually standing and saw that collapse and everybody here just gasped and uh, even the even the, the medical workers and the ambulance attendants when they saw that that people who are used to tragedy uh, grabbed each other and hugged each other and some started to cry well, and of think course of what one wonders happened. about the triage unit exactly we're set close up. to the base of that building trying to evacuate people and when a building of that size falls it does not fall on its own footprint I know absolutely I, I am you know I'm several blocks north of there so I don't know what that area looks like but one can only imagine well, the consequences uh, go on, not just uh, to the World Trade Center and to the uh, poor people who were trapped and caught there, but of course that is the heart of the world financial markets, which have now been shut down effectively as well. So the ripple effect continues this morning as we all try to adjust psychologically and intellectually to what we are witnessing here. It's, it, it is difficult to comprehend, but this country, the strongest country in the world, has been the target of a major coordinated terrorist attack and the end is not over yet, even if it's confined to just three, these three targets. The ripple effect goes on. All air traffic has been shut down. There will be no financial markets in place today. Business has been stopped across the country. And of course, who knows the human toll that that will be the result of this action. Matt and I, Matt actually just pointed out to me on any given day, 50,000 people, Tom, work 
at the World Trade Center. And, and at 8.45 in the morning, if they're not in the building, they're around the building. Uh, that, that's a beehive of activity down there. There is no more active area in terms of pedestrian traffic. I, I hate to keep going back to the collapse of that tower, but if you consider that this plane hit at mid-structure and that would have probably taken out the electrical in the building where elevators wouldn't work and people struggling to get some way out of that tower, and it takes a long time to come down over 100 stories, and to think about the possible loss of life that just occurred by the collapse of, of that southeastern tower is just amazing. Minna Kathuria is with the Today Show, and she apparently saw the collapse of one of those towers. Minna? Yes, hi, Matt. Tell me what you saw. Well, on the corner of Duane and West Broadway, um, walking down towards the Twin Towers, and it just collapsed. It looked like a, um, it looked sort of like the building just demolished smoke, clouds, I mean, smoke, clouds of smoke everywhere. People running towards me, I was going towards the Twin Towers, people were going away from the towers, away from the towers, and it was just people running, like, I've, I've, I've never seen a scene like it. Okay, have you, where, from where you were, Minna, did you see many of the injured being treated? Is there, is there any indication as the type of perimeter that the EMS people no, were Matt, dealing with? No, I hadn't gotten uh, that close yet. They were sort of blocking off the street. Now what they're doing is totally clearing out the area. And more and more um, emergency officials are coming in to help. Okay, can you just give me an idea of, of the reaction of people? down there, Minna, just, just, just pedestrians? That's so everyone, everyone in tears, people who are, were, I met some woman who was in the bu building to the right of, of the, where the first, uh, first uh, thing happened, and um, just all crying, having, wondering if the people that they know in the buildings next door are, are, are okay. Jamie, uh, Minna, thank you very much, Minna. Take care of yourself. Jamie Gangel, our national correspondent, is, is on the phone now with some more information. Jamie? Katie, as you well know, buildings around town are being evacuated. The State Department has been evacuated. The White House has been evacuated. And the Pentagon has been evacuated. Intelligence officials tell me that they do believe at the Pentagon that that was a third plane going down. They have had uh, the intelligence sources that I've talked to say that they have not received any claim of responsibility yet. Re Jamie, have you gotten any information from Reagan National Airport as to air traffic in the area this morning or anybody who might have somehow traced this, tr this plane or figured out? from where it came or they, where it was they going? They still do not have any of those details yet. It is almost uh, impossible. They, they were confused for a long time as to whether it's a bomb or a plane. They say now that it appears to be a plane, but they say that that is all the information that they have. As you know, the uh, FAA has shut down all aircraft now, and they are now going back and trying to sort that out. But they do not have any information on that yet. Do they know what type of plane it might have been? There is no, um, um, unfortunately, they just don't have that yet. All right, Jamie. Thank you very much, Jamie. We'll you be know, talking with you. It goes without saying this is the most serious attack in the United States in more than 100 years. Uh, not since the War of 1812, and certainly the damage that we did to ourselves during the Civil War have, has this country suffered this kind of damage uh, within its interior. Obviously, Pearl Harbor, which uh, triggered World War II, was a horrific event as well. But there has never been an event to match the magnitude of this one, in which everything has been shut down in terms of air traffic. The national capital has been immobilized. The White House, State Department, Pentagon has been attacked. The financial markets have been shut down. There is an untold loss of life here in Manhattan, the nerve center of America, to say nothing of what's going on at the Pentagon. When's the last time? I mean, this is a shot of New York City and downtown Manhattan that many people have never, can't remember. It looks the, the like a movie. one tower. It looks yeah. like a movie, frankly, right. yeah. that this is unfolding, and it combines the horror of the TWA Flight 800 bombing and the Murrah Federal Building because it's both of these incidents, of course, coming together in the most horrific way. By now, I would guess that everyone is up across all the time zones in America. It's uh, 7.15 in the West, obviously, but for those of you who are just joining us at uh, 8.45 Eastern Time, 8.42 Eastern Time today, an American Airlines flight 
uh, Flight 11 from Boston to LAX was crashed into one of the World Trade Center uh, buildings. Uh, Fifteen minutes later, another plane hit the other one. That has that building has now collapsed. Uh, within an hour of those two attacks, the Pentagon was hit. Now we're told by a plane, an untold number of casualties there. President Bush has been on the air. He was in Florida at the time, saying apparently this was a terrorist attack. Everyone now believes that carefully coordinated from the air and the consequences of it in terms of human loss and the effect on this country are still to be determined. We want to go now, Tom, to Kathleen Zichi, who's with NYU Downtown Hospital. They've been treating some of the injured. Kathleen, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you tell me about the injuries you're seeing and, and, the, and the numbers of people you've been treating? Well, uh, we've seen a steady stream of patients for, for approximately an hour and a half. Uh, with, uh, many appeared to be uh, superficial injuries, but I, I can't tell you that I've seen the most serious ones because I believe they're going in through the ambulance bay. So we have a very high level of activity here. Our first priority is on the care of those patients. And we do not have an exact tally at this time because of the level of activity at the hospital. We've also been responding to family members and friends who have come seeking information to the hospital. And just quickly, Kathleen, how far is the hospital from the, the World Trade Center? The hospital is perhaps a, a five-minute walk from the World Trade Center, and we were the first responder when the Trade Center was attacked in 93, so unfortunately we have some prior experience. Yeah. What, what kind of medical support is there downtown? How many hospitals in the immediate area there that could help with the injured? We are the only hospital south of 13th Street in New York City. So we serve a very large uh, proportion of the city. For that reason, our emergency room is a, a very high priority of this hospital. And uh, the staff have been doing a heroic job in terms of responding to the patients. Kathleen, what about the triage unit that is on the ground there? Are they NYU, uh, a team of NYU medical people on the scene as well? Yes, there are. Um, I, I uh, cannot respond to that question because I am not on the scene, and I don't have that information. But you do have medical people, your personnel there at the scene? Uh, that is my understanding, yes. Katie, what we're worried about now is that the other building may come down. Uh, they've obviously evacuated that whole area as a result of the crash of one World Trade Center. Now I'm told that there's concern about the second one collapsing as well. Plainly, there's been an enormous amount of structural damage in the upper floors of all that. Uh, and uh, it is more than 100 stories high. It wouldn't take much to bring it down. Kathleen, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. We're told now that a uh, spokesman for uh, Yasser Arafat, the leader of the Palestinian, uh, uh, the leader of the PLA, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, that he has, uh, that Arafat has condemned what has happened here in New York. He says that the PLO has no role in it whatsoever. They're completely shocked and appalled by what is happening. There was just one earlier report that the Radical Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine claimed responsibility, but that was later denied as well. We don't know yet who is in fact responsible for this, but it was very carefully planned and coordinated, and fair to say it has been a devastatingly efficient and effective attack on the heart of this country. Yes. Pat Dawson is on the ground near the World Trade Center. Pat, are you there? Pat Dawson, can you hear me? Apparently. Okay, he's having some audio problems. We'll get to Pat in just a moment. Just amazing. You have to stop and think about, you know, the, the hijacked plane and the terror of the passengers on board. Oh. As, as it could have been up to an hour that they realized something was dramatically wrong with this flight and then thinking that perhaps they were going to John F. Kennedy Airport here in in Queen. that they believe it was a plane. Let's go to Pat Dawson, who is down by the World Trade Center. Pat, can you hear me? Right down here, we cannot tell you much more in terms of specific information other than to say that there are probably at this stage, I would say, hundreds, perhaps in the thousands of emergency workers who in the last hour and a half have managed to work their way down here to lower Manhattan uh, and basically try to get into this fray. They are, we are standing right here about 10 to 12 blocks north of the World Trade Center. These fire uh, firemen that you can see, firefighters, 
firefighters are walking down towards the site now, and they literally have been arriving by the dozens over the past hour or so. Uh, as we say, probably in excess of a thousand or more uh, emergency workers from New York City and surrounding areas converging on this site now to try to make some sense of it. As you can imagine, at this point, there is a certain level of chaos because they're just trying to sort out who's alive, who's not. We did speak to, as I said before, some of the emergency workers. They are police officers from the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Uh, that is the organization that has jurisdiction over those two buildings specifically, as well as bridges and tunnels. Uh, I spoke to two of them who were actually down there when that building collapsed. They said that they speculate that the loss of life had to be horrific, that there were not that many people down there on the streets at that point, that most of them who had been evacuated, that is civilians, but on the other hand, they said that there were literally hundreds of emergency workers who were down at that end. They have no idea the level of loss of life at this point. Uh, when I asked one of them why he was going back in as he suited up since he could barely breathe, he said, it's my job. And they may be, there may be some of my brother officers in there. There may be other people in there. So those officers going in here, as you can see, all kinds of fireworkers going in there, literally in the thousands now converging on this site. We cannot give you much of an organizational sense beyond telling you probably what you already know, which is that two separate aircraft have struck the two towers of the World Trade Center. Uh, if memory serves, uh, I think each of those towers stands 110 stories. Uh, some of the dust, as you can probably see now, is blowing in our faces. It just really depends on which way the wind blows as to whether or not we're enveloped in some of the dust and the smoke. Uh, as you can see from these pictures, uh, the amount of dust from the fire that's still burning, uh, flames and ash, is extraordinary at this point. Uh, and at least a few emergency workers have said that they really aren't so sure that other tower won't stay up now. Uh, they really didn't think the first one was capable of coming down, but it did. Uh, and so they're basically saying, keep back as far as you can. On the other hand, facing that danger, as we have been telling you, many, many hundreds of these workers are heading over those lines down towards that burning building to try to rescue those people uh, who are in there, uh, be they emergency workers, be they civilians. The original crash took place just about quarter to nine, by my reckoning. Uh, I don't know the exact time, but about quarter to nine. And when that took place, obviously at that hour, the building would not be packed with people, but it's still late enough in the morning that there would be enough people. We were listening to Pat Dawson, who's standing near the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan. And Katie and Tom, I was thinking while Pat was talking, you both spent some time out at Oklahoma City at the, at the Murrah Federal Building after that explosion. It took more than a week to sift through that rubble of a building that was how many stories? Probably... Uh, it was about 30 stories, as I remember. I'm sorry to interrupt uh, you both, but apparently we've gotten a report that now a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department. Again, that's an initial report that I'm hearing from our producers in the control room. Uh, can we go to anyone for more information on that? Apparently... No more information where is, than that. Uh, where is Andrea Mitchell? Is she at the State Department? Well, the State Department has been evacuated, as well as the White House. Ca the, ca the U.S. Capitol has been evacuated. Obviously, the Pentagon has as well. We'll go to Mick. Mick, uh, Mick what is the latest from the Pentagon? Katie, uh, security officials here at the Pentagon have not only evacuated the building, but they're clearing the entire area. Security forces have reported uh, that they have received information of another plane hijacking, that it's about 20 to 25 miles out of Washington, D.C., headed in this general direction. Uh, Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld a few moments ago was refusing to leave the building. Uh, we ran into the chief naval officer, the top naval officer, Admiral Vern Clark. They were loading him quickly into a car to take him to an alternative command site. Do you have me? They were taking they were taking Admiral Clark to a the alternative command site. Hello, do you hear me? Yes, yeah, we, we can, do, Mick. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, there's there's no confirmation of this latest threat, but security officials here are taking it very seriously. We were standing with uh, Secretary Rumsfeld's security detail, uh, who, as soon as they got the report, went running into the building, and we were we were herded away. Uh, but uh, they have set up an alternative command site somewhere in the area. The Pentagon has set up a, a crisis team uh, to deal with this situation. 
Uh, but so far, the latest reports are that, a, that another plane of some kind may have been hijacked and headed in this direction, Katie. Yeah, uh, we also should tell you, Mick, this is Tom Brokaw, that the FAA now says that all international flights headed for the United States are being diverted to Canada. This at a time when, as Jim McLeishevsky is telling us, there's an unconfirmed report that there's been another hijacking. All takeoffs were stopped, but there were planes in the air, obviously, at the time of these first two attacks on the Twin Trade Towers and then on the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. Andrea Mitchell is standing by with more information. She was at the State Department. Andrea? The State Department, as you know, has been evacuated. Secretary of State Colin Powell is now en route home from Lima, Peru. He did not get to his destination of Bogota, Colombia today, so that trip canceled. He, as all other officials, heading back. Uh, State Department officials and the White House officials and the NSC have all been evacuated as well, although Condi Rice was earlier in the Situation Room, and CIA Director George Tenet has been holding meetings in his office in Langley, Virginia. And as we reported earlier, key FBI team members from their rescue efforts and anti-terror coordinating team were stranded in Monterey, California, where they were on a secret uh, secret. Uh, exercise, military exercise, right. against exactly this kind of event. Andrew, I have to, yes, Andrew let me interrupt for a second. Can you tell us any more about reports we're getting that a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department? I do not have confirmation of that. All right. uh, they did evacuate the State Department, but we do not have confirmation at this moment about a car bomb outside the State Department. You know, Andrea, thanks. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're going to go back to Jim Mik Mikluszewski at the Pentagon. Mick? Uh, I've got my eyes peeled here, Katie. I don't see anything, uh, but security forces in the area have just blared out over their loudspeakers to any pedestrians who are anywhere near the Pentagon to take cover immediately. Uh, there was, as I said earlier, an indication that uh, another plane may have been hijacked and headed in this general direction. So far, all we see are security helicopters circling the Pentagon. Uh, again, the skies are crystal clear blue, and I can't see the speck of an airplane, but security forces here are obviously alarmed enough uh, not only to tell people to, uh, to uh, keep some distance from the building, but to take immediate cover. Can you tell me a little bit more? Well, actually, let's look at these live pictures at the World Trade Center. The other tower of the World Trade Center has just collapsed. You are looking at live pictures of the second twin tower at the World Trade Center collapsing as a result of the crash of an airplane into its side. That, I believe, was the first tower that was struck this morning at 842 well, Eastern eat. Time. You're not there. That is now... No you know the fall into the ground and the profile collapse. of manhattan has been changed there's been a declaration of war by terrorists on the united states there's pat nothing dawson, short of that. pat dawson excuse me tom is down at the scene pat where's wing where's wing where's wing pat can you wing. hear us obviously there is there is pandemonium downtown pat is not far from the world trade center as you can hear from the sirens and you can only imagine the confusion and the terror that is in that area after not one but both trade center towers have now collapsed more than a hundred stories of steel concrete electrical here it is that's a videotape replay We are back at 10.30 Eastern Time on this Tuesday morning, this horrific, incredible, not to be believed Tuesday morning. You are looking at live pictures of the World Trade Center where just a few minutes ago, within the last minute actually, the second Twin Tower collapsed. Just to recap, if you're just joining us, around 8.42 Eastern Time this morning here in New York City, a plane crashed into the right Twin Tower of the World Trade Center about two-thirds of the way up the building, leaving a huge gaping hole, a huge fire, 
and tons of billowing smoke. About 25 minutes later, a second jet, believed to be a 727, 737 or a 737, some reports of a 757 even, then crashed in the second twin tower. The first plane, incidentally, was en route from Boston, Massachusetts to Los Angeles. Here's the video, I think, of the second plane striking the tower. That's right. We're not sure the origin of that plane is my understanding. The first plane that caused that hole on the right-hand side in the other twin tower was from Boston to LAX to Los Angeles. It was Flight 11, American Airlines. We have confirmed that that plane was hijacked. What happened following the hijack, hijacking rather, is unclear. We should note that about an hour after the first collision at the Pentagon, reportedly another plane crashed into the Pentagon, which is just outside Washington, D.C., in northern Virginia. All air traffic has been stopped. Government buildings have been evacuated, as have other buildings across the country. The Sears Tower in Chicago was evacuated. You can imagine that other buildings in major cities and small cities around the country are probably being evacuated as well. There's an unconfirmed report of a car bomb at the State Department. We have not been able to pin that down. Uh, there is also, Jim McLeshevsky was told, that there was an unconfirmed report of another air hijacking. We share this with you, not in an attempt to in any way exacerbate what is already a terrible situation, but so much has come true today based on these early reports that we want you to have as much information as we can possibly get at the Pentagon. All people outside were told to take cover just moments ago, but Jim McLeshevsky said the skies were clear. There was an unconfirmed report of another hijacking with a plane headed towards Washington. Again, we don't want to sound alarmist, right. but that is something that Mick heard while he was at the Pentagon. We also want to mention that the president is en route from Longboat Key, Florida, where he was there to visit an elementary school to talk about literacy. Obviously, clearly his agenda has changed dramatically. He will convene a meeting of the National Security Council as soon as he gets home. Colin Powell is also on his way back from Lima, Peru. He was scheduled to be in Bogota, Colombia. And probably not at the White House. They'll probably take him to a safe location. There are a number of them, some in the hills of Virginia, as you know. And my guess is that Air Force One is in the unusual situation of having a fighter plane escort on its way back from Florida today. Well, That's where we stand. Think about the, the, the loss of life that we could have seen this morning. If you think about the fact that when full, the World Trade Centers hold about 50,000 people, no telling how many people were at work before 9 o'clock this morning and then shortly after 9 o'clock in the other tower. But if you look at this picture here, Tom and Katie, at Lower Manhattan, it appears that terrorists have succeeded this time in, in doing what terrorists tried to do back in 1993. This is war. Uh, this is a declaration and an execution of an attack on the United States two of our most conspicuous symbols of the American system of capitalism. The Pentagon, which of course is the headquarters of the most mighty military in the world, was attacked today as well. Uh, the White House has been evacuated. The State Department has been evacuated. Financial markets have been immobilized. All flights taking off after these attacks were grounded. International flights have been uh, sent it to Canada. It turns out it's transatlantic flights transatlantic. only going to Canada now. So there has been great chaos visited upon this country to say nothing, as you pointed out, Matt, so importantly, of the still untold loss of life. And it's going to be horrendous. We don't know yet what the exact numbers are, but we can only tell you by looking at those pictures that you can guess as well as that we can that there are going to be a lot of people who are not going to be able to escape that. Back in 1993, when the bomb blew up in the basement of the World Trade Center, so many survivors talked about how long it took them with no power in the elevators to, get to walk down the smoke-filled stairways. And you think about how many people were still trying to escape those buildings when first one and then the second tower collapsed. And of course, the triage unit that has been set up, area hospitals are all receiving victims. And as Matt said, 50,000 capacity when everybody is in the building. But many people at 8.42 a.m. here in New York are at their desks working in their offices. One young man or one man was reached by phone and was asked what is happening there. And he said, we are blanking dying here. Not to and mention. There was screaming and yelling and pure chaos, understandably, going on in the there, background. There's a picture of lower Manhattan, ladies and gentlemen, the most important city in the world in so many ways. And now it has been attacked uh, by terrorists at the World Trade Center, and the damage is beyond our ability to tell you in great detail. Let here's me what, mention that, uh, oh. That I was going to say, here's what the president said. He canceled an education appearance in Florida. Here's what he said just a short time ago. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is a difficult moment for America. I, um, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary of Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. That was George W. Bush about an hour ago speaking from Longboat Key, Florida. He is en route to Washington, D.C. We're looking at some pictures on the ground, or we were, of apparently some of the victims. Let's go to Pat Dawson if he can hear us. He is on the ground. Sure. Quite extraordinary. This, these are the emergency workers who are coming back. It was just about 10 minutes ago that we described to you the possibility of that North Tower collapsing. About five minutes after we went off the air, it did collapse. Once again, we have no idea at this point the loss of life. I can only tell you there were hundreds of emergency workers down there, about five or six blocks. It took probably about, I would say, no more than 50 or 60 seconds for that dust cloud, dust and smoke, to literally make it the five or six blocks up here and begin to envelop us, at which point we started to move out of the way. There were literally dozens and dozens of firemen who were trying to run past us. In fact, our cameraman even captains in his car and drove The people who you see here are pretty much all emergency workers. Many of them.